Good morning, uh, good afternoon. Uh, thank you for joining uh, this webinar. I, I look forward to the next 45 minutes sharing some thoughts uh, uh, around uh, the whole idea of digital transformation, what's happening in the world and how do organizations, especially the, my focus really is around publishing and education companies. That's, that's what most of our, our customers uh, at Impulses are, and I expect most of the participants here are from that industry. So my focus is around uh, content, learning, knowledge, uh, companies involved in this, what's happening, how do you uh, deal with this change, uh, how do you, uh, you know, embrace the digital transformation. So, so that's the focus of this uh, webinar. Uh, in fact, Three years back, uh, we at Impulses had started an initiative uh, uh, of uh, what, what we call the lunch and learn sessions. And we used to run these series of sessions uh, in different cities and actually share some pertinent uh, happenings in the industry, bring some of our customers, prospects together and create a forum. So our idea really always was to create a forum where uh, publishers can exchange uh, ideas, uh, talk about uh, you know, different things that are happening in this industry and networks. So, so that was a concept that we started three years. We ran it pretty successful, uh, successfully for the last three years. And in this new world, uh, we had to adapt this uh, and uh, we're doing this in a virtual format. So, what we plan to do over the next few weeks is actually run a series uh, of uh, conversations. Uh, some presentations from uh, Impulse's uh, senior executives, some from customers. So you will see uh, over the next few weeks, we are gonna have uh, conversations with uh, different customer leaders uh, and, and bring this, uh, basically create a community, create a network where uh, uh, our customers, publishing executives can share some ideas. Uh, we also intend to create a, a group, a LinkedIn group. Uh, we'll send you a link shortly once uh, it is ready for launch. Uh, so bas basically facilitate a network uh, for idea exchange. So that's the idea of Go Digital and that's what Go Digital stands for. So let, let, let me uh, get started. So I, I am going to do uh, this session in two parts. Uh, so my focus is to look at what's happening. Uh, there are multiple uh, uh, you know, uh, things that are happening and we'll talk about that. And um, this first session, I'm just gonna focus on what's really happening and how do you deal with that at, at an overall level. And we're gonna have a second uh, webinar, most probably uh, uh, next uh, Wednesday this time, where we will get into very specific practical strategies that publishers, uh, education companies can adapt uh, and uh, uh, you know, implement from a, a digital transformation perspective. So it's gonna be a two part uh, session that I'm gonna do. So before I start, uh, I, I'll just take, uh, uh, five minutes to talk about uh, what, what's happening in uh, impulses. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, just to give you a quick update uh, uh, on impulses, uh, mo most of you are aware uh, that impulses is in the business of uh, enabling uh, learning and knowledge across the world. Uh, we, we firmly believe that the mission of the organization is to focus on how do we help uh, our customers uh, and every individual, uh, you know, uh, how do we help them spread knowledge and learning uh, through technology? Uh, how do we enable technology to help this process? What we do, uh, we, we do uh, three things for our customers, right? So one is uh, platforms. So we have, uh, content and learning delivery platforms, uh, iPublish Central Scholar, IPC Health. These are platforms through which uh, learning content can be delivered uh, to the uh, end users. So that's one part of our business. The second part is 
we look at technology, we understand the uh, technology in the uh, content and learning world very well. We look at these technologies and help our customers create uh, innovative solutions. So, so we, we help them build custom solutions through our technology services. And last but not the least, the most important one is how do you handle content? Uh, what is this content? Uh, how do you deliver this content? How do you make sure your content is live, uh, interactive, uh, is engaging uh, with your uh, reader, learner, uh, whoever your end customer is? So, so essentially, we are an end-to-end -end, uh, partner uh, to our customers. We, we provide you a complete services right from content technology and platforms. IPC Scholar, uh, which is a flagship product uh, of uh, Impulses. Uh, this is a platform on which you can deliver uh, any type of content. Uh, it doesn't matter whether it's books, whether it's journals, whether it's uh, learning, uh, education, audio, video, any type of uh, digital content that you have, you can deliver through this uh, uh, IPC Scholar. It is designed to deliver any type of content. Uh, built on fundamental principles of open architecture, uh, principles of being highly customizable, easily customizable, not just uh, highly customizable, uh, easily customizable. So those are founding uh, principles that we use uh, to, uh, to build uh, IPC Scholar. Uh, we have over 250 portals today, uh, around 25,000 institutions where the content uh, reaches uh, for, from our publishers and about half a million uh, uh, titles, uh, books and journals and learning content that's there uh, on uh, our platform today. And millions of users are accessing uh, our platforms uh, to uh, reach this content. Uh, like I said, uh, IPC Scholar is built on uh, a microservices architecture, the idea really being, how do we create a comprehensive solution uh, and make it customizable? So each of our customer has specific needs and how do we create a, a custom solution uh, quickly for uh, the uh, our customers? So that's the idea. Uh, behind IPC Scholar and using microservices as an architecture there, right? So, so we have these fundamental building blocks that deliver different types of uh, services. And as we assemble these blocks, we can come up with different solutions for different uh, uh, use cases our customers may have. So ease of implementation, uh, delivering uh, many types of uh, business models. Uh, these are key elements behind our design and uh, IPC Scholar serves that purpose. Some of our customers, so we, we have uh, customers almost uh, today in about 100 different countries across the world. Uh, and uh, most of our customers are uh, in the professional publishing space or in education and delivery space. Uh, a lot of our customers do uh, education delivery in K-12, uh, kind of space. So, so most of our customers are in either education or uh, uh, publishing space from, from a professional scholarly publishing space. Uh, the, the reason I'm saying that, and as, as we go along into the rest of the presentation, uh, the focus of this entire discussion around digital is about publishers of this nature, where you're looking at delivering education, delivering content as a part of uh, learning, as a part of professional development that people have, uh, whether it's, it's a K-12 student or an enterprise employee who is trying to uh, you know, uh, enhance their skills. So, so that, that, that's where our focus as an organization is. And when, when we talk about enabling uh, knowledge through technology, this is what exactly we mean and we serve these kind of customers. The other important element, and, and uh, which is the uh, foundation of uh, digital transformation, uh, is our innovation lab. Uh, we have created this innovation lab 
a couple of years back, and we focus on looking at practical ways. It's, it's not about talking about AI ML or AR VR in, in generic sense and talk about how uh, you know, Amazon is doing something or some uh, big manufacturing company is doing something, but talk about uh, how are these knowledge companies, learning companies, publishers, what are their practical ways they can apply this? And, and, and there's a lot of interesting work uh, that's happening uh, in the innovation lab, uh, looking at specific examples and, and building uh, uh, proof of concepts and uh, you know, educating our customers on specific ways of using that. And, and one of the service that you will uh, soon hear from us uh, is uh, what we call the SSAM service, which would talk about you know, how do you deliver uh, you know, uh, knowledge, uh, how do you uh, effectively use your content uh, through this service. So, so you'll be hearing about this uh, soon. So that's uh, the other uh, important update uh, from uh, uh, Impulse's point of view. All right. So, uh, that's about impulses, so let's get to the topic. Uh, uh, today, uh, like I said, uh, I want to do this in uh, a, as a two-part uh, webinar. The first part, uh, I'm going to talk about what is the imperative. Uh, how do you look at this new normal uh, that all of us are seeing, and how do you transform your content and learning delivery? So th these are the topics uh, that I want to cover today. and. In the next session, I, I'm going to uh, go into very specific uh, framework uh, uh, strategy that we uh, we have seen work. Uh, we have used it in uh, several customer scenarios, and we'll, we'll talk about that. So let, let, let's begin. Publishing is a complex business. Uh, uh, publishing and learning delivery. It's a complex business. Uh, because of the type of content, uh, we have several customers who have 10, 15 different types, content types that they deal with. So the diverse type of contents, the diverse standards and formats, and you're talking of EPUBs and PDFs and SCOM and XAPI and uh, JATS XML and so on. So for the, they have a diverse uh, formats uh, because uh, different content types need different formats, different uh, end consumers uh, like different formats. There's so many, uh, you know, standards bodies, each one comes up with uh, a different set of formats. So diverse formats, diverse content, uh, diverse delivery channels. Uh, so gone are the days where you, you could just have a, 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 on a browser, uh, uh, you, you could just deliver some content, but now people are looking at uh, so many different uh, formats uh, through which they want to uh, deliver the content, uh, right? So uh, different delivery channels. Most importantly, as things have changed over the years, business models have changed. Uh, years back, a uh, lot of uh, you would remember that there was a simple, straightforward model. You just uh, went to an institution, the institution subscribed to your content, straightforward, one single business model that worked. Now, people are looking at many, many different ways uh, of uh, accessing the content. They are asking so many questions. There's so many things that are changing. So the whole open access movement, if some of you are in the journal space, uh, the whole open access movement, uh, that throws uh, a, a different set of variables. So a so whole lot of business models and uh, different geographies that you have to, the, the world has come closer. It, it's no longer about the country where you're publishing, you, you have access to the global markets and therefore that sets, sets up a different set of challenges. So having said that, as it is, uh, this is a complex business. Uh, and uh, added to this complex business, uh, the first change that started and probably started a few years back was this whole uh, internet. And internet, over, especially in the last four or five years, has really caught up. So now if you look at 
what happens? I mean, this is such a fascinating, when I was looking at this data, I was so fascinated. Look at what happens in one minute on an internet, right? People are watching, I mean, you look at uh, Netflix, 700,000 hours of uh, video is being watched in 60 seconds across the world on the internet, right? Uh, look at uh, Facebook, a million people logging in. Uh, look at the amount of search that's happening. Look at the amount of tweets that are happening. Uh, look at the amount of commerce, uh, data, content, uh, interactions that are happening. And this has definitely changed our world. And all, all of you have uh, seen this, uh, especially when you start looking at the publishing industry this was uh, this has been uh, mind boggling simply because first of all the publishing industry in general was designed for <clears throat> a print kind of a model so where you had a front cover you had a back cover you put some content uh, in between and uh, uh, you you had to release that at, at a particular point in time but now suddenly in the world of internet, this has changed. Uh, let me just hold up. Uh, Vina, is there something? Uh, someone trying to say something? Yes, Kotesh, we have some questions coming up already uh, to all our participants. Feel free to kind of post your questions in the Q&A box. We will take it up almost at the end of the session as a separate segment itself. Feel free to kind of post your queries uh, for sure. Uh, Kotesh, you may continue and we can respond to all the queries and I'll read out the questions for you, sure. Okay, thank you, thank you. So, so the, the first thing uh, from a publishing point of view was that to begin with, it was a complex business, dealing with so many different variables and so many different models. Then came the internet suddenly the world moved uh, uh, into the digital era. So, so the digital era arrived, right? Uh, then came in, in the last four or five years, all of us started talking about AI, ML, blockchain, AR, VR, IoT, 5G. And these are just disrupting and, and, and we're gonna talk about a little more about these things later on. But, these have disrupted business models and all of us have seen this, right? So uh, we have seen in many different industries. So when you start looking at uh, retail industry, for example, someone like Amazon has come and disrupted that entire industry. You've seen so many companies gone uh, bankrupt uh, because of their inability to move uh, you know, into the digital world. Uh, we have seen companies which we've uh, never thought of, never heard of, uh, create uh, new markets completely, whether it's Uber, uh, whether it's Airbnb. When did we, I mean, if, if we talked about this five years back, would we have thought about the world's largest transportation company probably wouldn't be owning a single car? The world's largest hospitality company probably doesn't own a single room, right? And, and they created different models. So these technologies have started disrupting, right? Uh, we are seeing that disruption definitely in the media and the publishing side also slowly, slowly, right? So in, in the media side, we've seen this disruption big time, right? So, so the traditional television companies, uh, Look at uh, companies like Netflix, for example, completely uh, disrupted the, the whole entertainment industry, right? So that is the other uh, uh, change that we have seen, right? So as a publishing company, we started with a complex business, the internet uh, becoming big and big, and then uh, came the disruptive technologies, and then, uh, most of us, the beginning of the year, never would have imagined where we would be uh, in, in the month of June or July. Uh, now we talk about a new normal. 
the, the pandemic has forced a lot of lifestyle changes uh, in, in every single individual, right? Without exception, every single person has been impacted with this uh, lifestyle changes that's been forced on us. And therefore, as John Chambers says, this pandemic is forcing companies to make a transition to digital. So uh, last year when I did lunch and learn session and we were kind of talking about, you know, uh, how do you do digital transformation? There was still a lot of companies thinking about it, right? They're still wondering, uh, should I tiptoeing around that, you know, uh, uh, wetting their feet a little bit in the water here, there kind of a thing. But now this has become real. Uh, the world has become so much more virtual now, right? So we don't know this fall in US, we don't know whether the educational institutions will open up fully, partly, uh, actually whether they'll open or they'll uh, remain virtual. Maybe it's, it's a combination somewhere, uh, right? So, so with all this happening, uh, the new normal has created that urgency. Uh, and, and also uh, created a great opportunity uh, for people who can move fast. Uh, this is a great opportunity. There is a sense of urgency. And, and the next few slides, I'm going to talk about uh, how do you prepare for it uh, in this new normal? Uh, what are the things that you need to consider? All right. So what does the winning in this new world really means? Winning in this new world is not so much about uh, starting an AI project or a big data project or uh, you know, going to some little bit of blockchain kind of a project or anything. It's not just about that. I'm not saying they're not important. They are disruptive. They are important. But more uh, uh, important is adapting uh, new management paradigms. Organizations have to look at some very, very fundamental uh, changes that are happening. The way we see our companies, the way we uh, look at all the stakeholders in our company, the way we interact with them, uh, and the way we uh, respond and react in the marketplace. So there is, there is uh, my submission to uh, all of you is that this is more about learning these new management paradigms than using technology. Leverage technology, absolutely, but the purpose behind uh, leveraging this technology uh, is to understand the paradigm shifts and use these technologies well in these uh, areas. Uh, I have looked at, uh, uh, I've been a student of this topic for uh, in the last two, three decades in terms of looking at uh, digital transformation at various stages. Uh, my submission to you is uh, look at these five dimensions of paradigm shifts that are happening. Starting from customer, what is your marketing philosophy? How do you approach market, your entire approach to market? Uh, how do you source, right? Uh, what, 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 what's gonna be your uh, sourcing strategies? Uh, so crowdsourcing is something that all of you have heard about. Uh, data, and last but not the least, is a very fundamental shift in thinking uh, products to platforms. And, and I'm, I'm gonna talk about these five today. So my, my focus really is uh, in this session today is about the paradigm shift and uh, what this paradigm shift means to uh, uh, each one of us uh, and, and, and you know, how do you deal with that? Uh, let's begin with that. Let, let's start with the customer. 
So th there is nothing new. So uh, I, I won't be surprised if uh, some of you thought customer cent centricity was something that uh, I, I learned in my business 101, uh, maybe 20, 30 years back. Now, customer centricity uh, in this modern day world means something very different. Customer cent uh, centricity is beyond uh, doing a CSAT survey once in two, three months and getting some data, making some corrections to your process or uh, fixing some uh, vexing problems some customers may have. Uh, it, it is important, uh, it has to be done, it's, it's basic hygiene, but when I talk about customer centricity, what we need to understand that as the world has changed. The world has changed because uh, in, in the old model, uh, traditional uh, thinking is that uh, I'm a company, I have a product and I broadcast my product to the customer. So I reach out, so it, it's a mass market kind of an approach. Uh, I have a product, I have to reach my product to the uh, uh, customer. Uh, I market this product, I sell this product, I service the product, I keep in touch with the customer. So it's a one-way transaction. That's traditionally uh, uh, always that we have looked at, right? What customer centricity in this new economy, uh, in the new normal really means, uh, thanks to all the uh, proliferation of internet, uh, thank to, uh, thanks to the proliferation of various uh, social media tools and uh, uh, the, 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 the hyper-connected world that we live in, uh, we have, as a company, as a product owner, as a service owner, as a solution owner, we are just one part of a big network. Uh, th there is so much of things that are happening before uh, we realize anything, uh, there is so much of interaction happening and you have to learn to play within that. You are not able to, I, I, years back I remembered this uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, intervention that I had to do uh, 10 years back uh, to, uh, for, for a large um, uh, audio, uh, you know, consumer audio manufacturer who was my customer. Uh, they had great products. They, they were the uh, the best known audio products uh, uh, in, uh, in in consumer audio products, right? So they had great products, no no questions about it. They were the gold standard from a product point of view. Uh, but but suddenly they uh, started noticing there were dips in their revenues, right? And uh, what happened was that. Uh, somebody on social media started some negative campaign on some things that uh, about the company and so on, which these people realized it about three, four months later, right? Now, suddenly the, they, they realized this and only when they started looking back saying that, why is my revenue dropping in some of these areas? And analysis has led to this whole social media uh, movement that was happening uh, around certain messages that were happening, right? That is what I mean by a network world. So that, that is one example. There's one fascinating example that I was reading a uh, few months back, right? So this is not just about companies and you know, how do you create customer networks, right? Uh, so I, I was reading this uh, story about a church in uh, Oklahoma. Now, the traditional church, uh, they started noticing uh, not many people are coming. Uh, uh, things were slowing down, uh, changing demographics or changing values or whatever that you want to call. Uh, and they hired this uh, uh, guy to come in and transform their uh, IT and digital and things like that. and. Uh, so what they did, and today it's, it's such a uh, uh, fascinating uh, uh, example of how they leverage. So what this guy did was he first created a community and he started creating apps. So he created a Bible app uh, 
with about 700 languages. So, so he had 700 different versions of Bible, uh, their app, uh, you know, languages, put it uh, on an app. So depending on whatever that you're comfortable with, uh, you, you would get access to that. They started creating a, a broadcast uh, of uh, the sermons. They started creating this community. They started taking uh, uh, inputs from what the community wants to listen to on a particular day. Because traditionally, if you look at a, 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 any church or a, any religious uh, model, the, the head of the, uh, the, the organization decides, okay, I'm going to today talk about a, B, C, X, Y, Z, you know, whatever the verse of the Bible or whatever sermon that they want to give, uh, it may or may not be what the people want to hear, right? So sudden, and so he started enrolling youngsters, so youngsters got interested. So he started addressing different age groups. So the, the Bible app, for example, that he created has 160 170 million, I mean, this some, some time back I was reading about it, 170 million downloads. And the, the entire community uh, became big. It became, uh, you know, hybrid, virtual. People would come to church and they connected uh, many other churches into this model, right? So it was not just that one uh, organization. So, so they had many churches who joined this entire network and it became a thriving community. Now that is what is called a networked model of customers where, where you're really leveraging your customer, uh, you're understanding your customer and uh, you are using your customer uh, effectively, right? So a customer no longer is just a recipient of your service. A customer is an asset that you can use the customer to improve, deliver better value, uh, and actually create newer products. And there are several examples where they use customers to build, uh, and the customer experience to build new products. So as you start looking at customer centricity, start looking at these three, four things, uh, access, understand every single customer uh, uh, engagement that happens, uh, every single customer interaction, uh, have access to that, keep track of that, right? Uh, that will give you a lot of uh, insights. Uh, engage with your customers, stop uh, uh, j just behaving as if you, you are there to just provide uh, a product or a service, but engage with them, learn with them, collaborate with them, and allow the customer choices to personalize what they want to see, uh, what they want to do, what they want to see, give them the option to personalize easily, uh, right? So, so that is what uh, customer centricity in, this, uh, in, in the modern day world means. W what does this mean from a publishing point of view? Uh, um, some some thoughts that I had on this, right? So, so, so when I look at a, a publishing point of view, uh, especially again the segment that we are talking about uh, are basically people who are uh, uh, in in the process of improving uh, professionally or learning education. That's that's the area where they are in. So essentially, they are engaging in three things: reading. Uh, they want to read some content, learn something new, what's happening. Uh, they are either researchers or they are learners. They could be a, a, a kindergarten student uh, or they could be a, a PhD student, doesn't matter. Or, or they could be a doctor who is uh, looking for continued medical education credits, uh, right? Uh, or a nurse uh, looking to enhance their skills. So they are in this mode of read or research or learn, understand this continuum. That is the continuum that uh, we are addressing. And, and therefore, Look at giving a seamless experience across all your products, uh, across uh, all the products, across different platforms, anytime, anywhere. Uh, traditionally, if you look at a lot of publishers that I see, uh, all their solutions are very product driven. So there's a journal, uh, there is a book, 
there is a uh, learning, there's an audio, there's a video. Look at it non, you know, look at it seamlessly. It, it's content, end of the day. It's learning, knowledge, content. That's what they're interested in. Bring all these pieces together and provide an experience. Let uh, uh, the customers personalize themselves. Create that rich uh, immersive experience. Create uh, you know, collaborative tools. All these things become uh, extremely important. Uh, and this will, uh, in turn, provide a, a lot of uh, insights in terms of uh, how you could monetize, what you could do uh, across rich content that uh, you all, uh, most publishers already have. So, so that's uh, talking about customer. The second paradigm shift is uh, uh, in terms of marketing. How, how do you go about what is happening in the marketing world today? Uh, traditionally, uh, when, when I started learning sales and marketing, uh, I was given this funnel. I was told, manage the funnel, manage the funnel, right? So it starts with uh, uh, you know, a whole lot of uh, people at the top of the funnel, go talk to them, push, and then uh, you know, as they get interested, uh, the funnel gets narrowed. Uh, the funnel in the new world is very different, right? So people, by before I as a, uh, a uh, provider reach out to my customer, uh, this whole lot of research already done. Uh, people are uh, going through the internet, talking in this hyper-connected world. Uh, they already have a lot of information you are part of that entire process. So people uh, approach the uh, uh, acquisition of new services uh, very differently. You have to be present in, <coughs> in, in, uh, at every stage. So that is why use all the <coughs> Uh, medium available. So it's, it's not just about either advertising, cold calling, and so on and so forth. You have to use all the tools, all the uh, uh, digital uh, media that is available uh, to be present, track, and uh, present your credentials, present your case uh, uh, on a regular basis. So that's that's a very, very different approach to uh, marketing that uh, is required. The third area of uh, great interest uh, is crowdsourcing, right? So crowdsourcing uh, can fundamentally change a, a, a lot of things. Uh, so I, as all of you are aware, crowdsourcing essentially, you, you're just going out and getting a, a, a set of, uh, let's say, quote unquote, strangers, uh, and helping you do different things. Why is this important? <coughs> so first thing is speed. I personally had a, a, a situation uh, uh, once where uh, we had to, uh, while our product was getting ready, we wanted to uh, also document, uh, create all the user documentation. So what are my options? One option is to go hire a bunch of tech writers and make them sit and go through this, or I, I can crowdsource it in the sense that I can use uh, a set of my customers, uh, I can use a set of uh, other users uh, all over the world to come access experience and as they experience, start documenting their experience and uh, I, I can use that to build my documentation. What, what happens? Uh, uh, my speed is improved. My scalability has improved. So I don't have to uh, wait for a long process of hiring people, selecting and training them and do all that. So the scalability improves, right? So speed, scalability, uh, access. Uh, there are situations where uh, there are specific uh, knowledge areas. So when you look at a publisher uh, today, let, let's say you, you want to do peer review. Uh, and uh, on a particular topic, right? Uh, can you use crowdsourcing effectively to do peer review? 
great area, right? Uh, what does that do? It'll give you access. It'll, it'll give you uh, reach to different types of skill sets uh, that you may not full time want it. Uh, you you do that. Uh, agility. Uh, you can be nimble. You can quickly pick up uh, and do things and, and reduce cost. I personally believe that organizations of the future uh, will have to embrace crowdsourcing in a big way. And uh, and organizations are using this very effectively. And uh, uh, the great examples, right? So if, if uh, any one of you have used uh, uh, Waze as an app, uh, what do they do? They, it's, it's a crowdsourced uh, model of understanding what's happening on different roads, where a cop is there, where there's an accident, where there's a slowdown, uh, which, which is a better route. Uh, all that comes from people. People on the road providing input and ways taking that input and uh, uh, you know, um, uh, you know, uh, using it effectively, right? Uh, you, th there are several examples of uh, uh, companies in, in the product space who have used their customers to uh, generate product ideas, packaging ideas, advertising ideas. There's so many examples, people like Coca-Cola, Pepsi, big brands, they, they do this now quite regularly. But learning, so crowdsourcing, yeah, there are platforms. It's not so much about that. Like I said, it's, it's about a paradigm shift, uh, which essentially means that I'm not afraid to take up some activity which I may not have internal skills but I will have the ability to uh, use external skills, uh, crowdsource them and uh, marshal that inputs effectively. So, so it, it's a management principle, uh, working principle that organizations need to learn. <clears throat> Data, uh, we've heard about this uh, more and more uh, in, in the last few years, big data, AI, ML, all these terminologies that you hear. Uh, we, we need to go beyond just statistics and some reports and, you know, uh, last month we did so much and, you know, conversion rate is so much. I mean, that is all fine. I mean, th those are all, again, hygiene. You need to do what you need to do. But start focusing on insights. Uh, understand your customer journey. What's happening? What are they reading? How much time are they spending? Uh, look at your product insights, uh, where, which are the products that are uh, being uh, read, uh, are they able to access easily. Uh, it's not just about uh, data about what they read, it's also about what was their journey. Did they get there quick enough? Uh, did they get what they wanted quick enough? Because in this day and age, especially the young uh, crowd, they don't have time. They, they, they're not uh, ready to sit and uh, uh, you know wait forever, right? They they want instant gratification. That's that's the mantra these days, right? So gain insights on products, processes, costs. Start looking at them and uh, use this. Uh, you can also the that is one part of it is in terms of improving, but there are again great examples in terms of uh, organizations that have. Uh, actually used data uh, that is already there within the organization. So there's enough data around you. you we don't need to create a new uh, set of data. We don't need to create new systems to capture new data and so on. There's enough data uh, in most organizations. There's already enough data. A great example of how people have used uh, uh, this uh, data for monetization is, is an example of uh, uh, the Weather Channel, for example, right? So Weather Channel, traditionally, what does Weather Channel do? They'll come up, they'll say, okay, tomorrow it's gonna rain, uh, day after tomorrow it's gonna snow, whatever, right? So, so they, they give you your weather predictions and that's where it ends. Uh, but over a period of time, they realize that they have so much of data available right uh, past trends future models uh, so they started using this to create new opportunities new monetization opportunities so for instance 
they could go to uh, the, the retailers when retailers are taking decisions in terms of what are they going to let, let let's say a, a apparel company wants to decide uh, uh, how much they're going to invest what they're going to invest uh, in, in terms of winter clothing right and but the channel now has enough data to start creating models and give them expertise to decide oh this winter is going to be very mild so therefore do not design uh, heavy duty, uh, you know, winter clothes. Maybe you just need to do that. So th they can provide that, those kind of insights that help uh, organizations drive their business strategies. So, so they, there is enough knowledge, uh, there, there's enough insight within the data that they have that they can uh, use this very effectively and, and they have started doing that. There are many examples like that. Google is again a great example of uh, how they have monetized different sets of data that they have uh, at various point in time. And as uh, organizations, there's enough uh, uh, knowledge within the organization that you can actually uh, monetize that very effectively. Uh, last but not least, uh, products to platforms. These are great examples of uh, platforms that got uh, uh, created, uh, right? Uh, these are business models that are disrupted. Uh, whether you uh, look at Amazon, you look at Netflix, you look at Uber, you look at Facebook, uh, Airbnb. Uh, I, I don't know how many of you know the story of how Airbnb got created. So there, there were these two guys who were uh, in, in a, a university and uh, I, I believe uh, one day they realized that there was a big uh, program going on and there were no uh, you know, hot rooms available. So they went and rented uh, uh, three or four uh, uh, you know, uh, inflatable uh, mattresses, put it out there and put a little ad, they got $80 a night, uh, and then suddenly a new business was born, right? That's how that entire business was born. Now, the thing about all these companies is that more than any product, they are platforms. They enable a whole lot of commerce, a whole lot of interactions that they happen. They don't necessarily think in terms of my product is a room night. Airbnb does not define that way, right? So, so they define it in terms of a service, in terms of a solution uh, and a platform, right? And I, my submission again is organizations need to start looking at that, right? Uh, you don't have to be necessarily uh, be a startup to be able to do that. And there are examples. So, so when I look at these game changers, uh, you, you could be in one of the four as an organization, you could be a disruptor. So Amazon came, there was an existing value chain, they disrupted that existing value chain. You could be an Uber or an Airbnb where you completely created a new value chain. So there's no such thing existed, you built something new. But then if you look at traditional companies like Walmart and uh, PayPal, for example, so Walmart, uh, basically what they did was they said, I already have all this. I'll create a better mousetrap. I'll create better customer service. I'll create a better uh, product, right? Uh, and uh, compete and Walmart literally turned around. Most of us know that in, in the last few years, right? So, and then, uh, there are value additions that are possible. So people like PayPal started looking at specific sub-processes and then they said, okay, I'm, I'm gonna focus on that. Uh, I'm not gonna worry about the bigger value chain. So it's a decision as an organization you can make. Uh, you, you can make, uh, but start thinking in terms of platform, thinking in terms of the service that you're delivering, right? Uh, what, what we are doing at Impulses, for example, our IPC Health uh, is a platform. We built this platform. When we built this platform, our idea was that we want to be an enabler to improve clinical outcomes at uh, medical facilities. That's what we said we set out to do, right? So that's our ultimate goal. So the entire platform that we are building, the entire solution, the service that we are building is based on that. So, uh, so the idea is that if we can improve uh, learning and skill development of the medical professionals in the hospitals. 
the clinical outcomes will improve. And that's, that's the goal, right? And, and therefore we're creating a complete ecosystem. Yes, there is a online reader, there is all those, uh, uh, IPC Health, again, is based on the IPC Scholar architecture. So while it is there, but there is also a bigger ecosystem. We have partners who are uh, involved, uh, a lot of our uh, customers uh, in the publishing, uh, in the learning space, who are involved contributing to uh, uh, various aspects of uh, content and learning. And we want to create that ecosystem. So this is uh, an example of what the, how we are approaching uh, uh, as a complete platform and a solution. I, IPC Health, I would say, is, a, is an example of thinking of a platform as opposed to thinking of a product. So uh, uh, before I close uh, uh, quickly, uh, and this is what uh, is going to be the topic of the next conversation. So. The strategy framework, uh, uh, having worked with several publishers uh, in, in the last few years, uh, I would uh, submit to uh, all of you to look at four pillars. Uh, as you start uh, looking at saying, you know, how do I embrace uh, digital transformation? Uh, who's your customer? What is the experience that you want to create? What is the need that you're fulfilling for that customer? Uh, right? Uh, what kind of platform do you have? Uh, uh, how do you create that seamless experience? Start thinking in terms of that. Think in terms of uh, content, not in terms of products. Uh, publishers have a lot of content, uh, which may be uh, in, a, in a different product silos, but there's a lot of content, there's a lot of knowledge, there's a lot of uh, learning that's out there. Look at the business model. How do you want to monetize? Uh, uh, how do you want to satisfy the need? Uh, so business models are important. So start looking at these four elements. And then there are these uh, implementation considerations. Uh, what's your production process? Uh, how are you integrating? The, you will never have a single solution that solves everything, okay? Uh, especially in the publishing world. There are tools which specialize in uh, uh, in our discovery, uh, in terms of uh, 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 how do you discover your content? There can be tools which are specializing in uh, uh, creating recommendations and things like that. There, 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 there are several great providers in this place. So uh, you, you will have to look at uh, how do you integrate uh, and, and what kind of timelines. So any project needs timelines. So, the, the, the next session uh, really is to go in a little deeper into each of this pillar and uh, start talking about specifics involved uh, in this pillar. But this is the strategic framework that we recommend. Uh, that's what I had to share. Uh, I can take any questions at this point in time. Thank you, Kotesh. We do have quite a few questions lined up for you. I'll start off with the first question. We have the first question from Anjali. Have any of your customers asked you about blockchain? Where do you think it can benefit publishers? Okay, so <laughs> a few personal views on blockchain. So I, I, I there is, uh, this is probably one of the most hyped uh, technologies uh, uh, in, in the recent, uh, especially in the last two, three years. Uh, <clears throat> um, again, blockchain means different things to different people. Uh, I, I see a lot of people trying to force fit uh, blockchain into different situations, uh, uh, which is uh, possible. But uh, the, the true value of uh, a, a, a blockchain uh, uh, as the greatest example of blockchain in, in a digital currency is where you are uh, keeping an uh, uh, integrity of uh, a, a unit, uh, whatever that unit is, whether it's, 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 it's a money or whether it is uh, a piece of content, uh, <clears throat> It, it could be anything. It could be a, 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 
a, a document in your business process. Uh, so, so the question is, uh, you, you want to keep the integrity start to end. You you want to identify and keep it, right? So that's that's the way I look at blockchain. I, I don't look at beyond that. Uh, there are some uh, good examples uh, uh, of uh, 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 possibilities of blockchain, especially in uh, uh, to some degree in uh, uh, early stages of publishing. Because one of the big problems in publishing is that, especially if you are a researcher, uh, if if I uh, put out my uh, abstract too early, uh, I may be scooped, right? Uh, so getting scooped is the biggest problem that every researcher has and therefore uh, can i use blockchain to kind of uh, 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 you know keep my uh, ip intact uh, uh, there are people who are looking at that that's that's one uh, way to look at it the second uh, uh, application of blockchain potentially uh, we, again I, I i would i i think the jury is still out uh, is how do you actually protect your uh, DRM? So you could apply blockchain to protect your DRM if that's so important for you. Uh, make sure that people don't copy and you know uh, uh, pass it around and things like that. So that's that's another uh, couple of good examples that I've seen. I've also seen a lot of funny examples uh, uh, of people trying to force fit uh, blockchain uh, into uh, different areas. Thanks, Kutish. We have one more. Uh, are you doing anything in the AI ML space that could improve content production process and reduce cost? Uh, absolutely. Uh, <clears throat> absolutely. So the, the innovation lab that I talked about uh, is uh, focused around practical ways of using AI ML. So uh, if you look at in any publishers, uh, 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 PNL, uh, a, a large part of the cost uh, is around content production, right? From uh, uh, authoring through all the processes that it needs to go through. Uh, and uh, it, uh, this is also a fairly time consuming activity. So the whole content production, right? From a, a manuscript being generated to the final product going out. Uh, there's several things, especially if you're trying to prepare it for the digital world, uh, it becomes far more complex because in a, in a print world, probably to some extent this is easier because all you had to do was you had to compose a page and give it to the printer, he printed it out and uh, you, you're done with it. Uh, in, in a digital world, your biggest challenge is gonna be how are you gonna, uh, how is your content gonna be discoverable, for example, right? Uh, and that discovery uh, is, is a very complex phenomenon in, in the, uh, uh, the the big bad uh, internet world today. So how do you do that? Uh, so, so there are uh, simple examples of, uh, can you uh, automate in, uh, the entire uh, tagging of your content? So can you use AI ML to uh, apply things like uh, 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 principles of semantics uh, onto your uh, content and so on. So there, there are uh, several very practical ways of uh, using this. These are very practical examples, uh, small, simple examples, whether you're a small publisher, large publisher, you can start using this step by step. Uh, so that's where our focus is and we, we're doing a lot of work in that space. Thank you, Kotesh. We have one more question from Varun Kumar. He would like to ask his question. Varun, please go ahead and unmute yourself. We'll come back to Varun. We, in the meantime, have one more question from Kayal, are you also getting requests related to the collaboration tools, remote access through integration of third party tools like Zoom, Google Classroom, etc.? Yeah, so <clears throat> when we talk about content and learning delivery, uh, um, especially uh, 
what we are seeing in the last uh, uh, couple of months, uh, I, I would say probably the last three, four months with this whole pandemic situation, uh, when most of the education has uh, kind of gone virtual, uh, it has become uh, very important uh, that uh, you are able to integrate with these uh, great tools, uh, virtual tools that are out there, whether it is uh, Zoom, whether it is Google Classrooms, whether it is different kind of webinars, uh, uh, how do you deliver, uh, you know, uh, these things? Uh, so it's, it's it, again, it, it's, it's a big area of our uh, focus for us. Uh, how do we bring these together? Uh, there are uh, uh, myriads of solutions that uh, are there, uh, uh, but uh, it, it's extremely important today, especially if you have to do virtual education delivery, uh, which has become uh, probably the biggest driver that we are seeing uh, is around uh, uh, virtual uh, delivery of education, uh, whether it is kindergarten students, whether it is, uh, uh, you know, graduate students or undergraduate students, uh, it doesn't matter the entire range, right? So, uh, how do you do that? And th this year, for example, uh, uh, the state of New Jersey is talking about hybrid classes, which means 50% of the students are in the classroom physically and the other 50% are uh, at home and you have to do a uh, education delivery. So, uh, so th this entire area is evolving and we're keeping in pace with uh, what, what's happening in that space. Sure. Yeah, uh, Kotesh, uh, uh, one on this side. Yeah. Very, very uh, uh, interesting uh, talk, Kotesh. Thank you so much. I, I was just, you know, uh, reflecting back upon the last, you know, 40, 45 minutes, which you talked about. And I, I love the business model disruption cases, which you talked in, in particular, right? You know, many companies who, who, you know, we never thought about, you know, would exist maybe, you know, five to 10 years ago. Uh, my question to you is, is there any, you know, innovative business model which you think uh, can also come in, you know, in the publishing uh, business space, uh, your thoughts? Yeah, so we, we are seeing a lot of uh, uh, interesting innovations and uh, um, I, I'll give you an example of, uh, of one of my customers. Uh, yeah. So he is... Uh, what they decided, uh, what, what they're doing is they're giving access to their content to the students. However, they are looking at simulating a Netflix or an Apple music kind of a thing in, in this whole uh, supplementary reading, right? So, okay. so uh, all the content that they have is in the supplementary reading space. Uh, which means this additional reading uh, that the teacher asks the students to do yeah. and uh, in, in the schools. So what, what they do is they create a stream uh, of books. Uh, so let's say the stream has about 150 books uh, and the students can access these 150 books. And uh, they have a set of editors who are constantly uh, looking at this and then uh, they replace some of the books uh, yeah. uh, every uh, month, maybe 10, 15 books, uh, put some newer books to it. Uh, so that's, that's uh, one way that they're doing. So, the, so the, uh, the, uh, the list is fresh, student have new things to read. Uh, so so that's, uh, that, that's one area that I'm seeing. A lot of innovation, uh, early stages right now, uh, we are having quite a few conversations uh, especially in the education delivery space. Uh, yeah. uh, how do we deliver education in, in this, uh, you know, uh, complex world? So people are coming up with uh, uh, many innovative uh, ways of doing that. Thanks. Thanks, Kotesh. Thank you, Varun. We have one more from Kayal uh, query for you, Kotesh. Out of curiosity, with education institutions being closed and digital is the only way of content delivery, did you have to make any modifications to your platform recently to adapt to the new normal? We, uh, we, we had to make uh, uh, changes. 
uh, to the uh, platform uh, for in, uh, instance you know starting to look at integrating uh, to uh, 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 you know tools like uh, let's say google classroom or things like that uh, we had to start uh, looking at integrating uh, with uh, uh, things like webinars and uh, so on and so forth uh, the, a lot of this space especially in the new normal in terms of how a a, a publisher wants to monetize uh, uh, is evolving and uh, there are uh, uh, the, the the new product roadmap uh, is all about collaboration so, so we we have listed out a lot of features uh, 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 focusing around uh, collaboration and what i call a virtual classroom environment so how do i uh, create a virtual classroom and, and uh, uh, how do we manage that uh, as, a, uh, as a complete solution. So, so that's where a lot of focus has been. Thanks. Thank you, Kotesh. Requesting all our participants, if you have any queries to ask, you can raise your hand. We can enable you to ask the question directly, or you can even type uh, your queries right now. And some of you have asked, is this presentation available? Soon we'll be posting this on our social media handles and on our website. It would be great if you can go through our webinar, the recording shortly. Looks like we have. Yes, I think um, we are done with almost all the queries. Uh, I think we have one more. Uh, will FB with their capability be a threat combined with Amazon? This is from Shiv. Will uh, Facebook their capability be a threat combined with Amazon? Uh, to impulses or to publishers in general, or I'm not sure what the context really is. Um, if Shiv can clarify that, maybe I can. Shiv, yeah, go go ahead, Shiv. As in, uh, you can uh, unmute yourself and. Uh, Hi, Kotesh. Uh, good evening. Hey. It was a uh, good one. So, always I imagine this uh, social media platforms so with their versatility on the way that they can control the users combined with uh, launching capabilities, something like a platform of Amazon can be a real threat to the world in terms of uh, publishing, content consumption, as well as uh, the business models. Uh, so, so I, I have a, a, a slightly different perspective uh, uh, on this, and I had uh, actually earlier on noticed uh, uh, Hugo had joined. I don't know if he's still there, and uh, Hugo is the uh, head of IPA. <laughs> so, the I personally think that. Uh, a lot of the customers that we uh, I deal with, uh, uh, especially in this day and age of uh, uh, fake news, fake science, fake everything, right? Uh, the the uh, there is certain amount of uh, credibility of the content and learning that people are looking for, and that can only be given by an established. Uh, publishers with uh, a strong editorial process uh, and, uh, and and I don't believe that ever going to be replaced uh, uh, so I do not see any of this social media really uh, 
replacing any serious science uh, will that uh, replace some uh, uh, general conversations and uh, you know if if i was just a magazine publisher uh, maybe i would be a little worried about all that but not as a serious uh, uh, publisher of serious content uh, which is you know goes through a, a rigorous editorial process uh, i would however uh, how do i monetize uh, 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 do i monetize it myself or do i uh, is there going to be a, a platform where uh, that will get monetized better uh, are, are i mean those are questions that every individual publisher needs to uh, ask themselves whether uh, i will focus on the content side of things and just do that or i would focus in the end uh, you know different parts of the value chain so I, I don't know if I answered your question, but I I personally don't think so. Okay, thanks, Gautam. Thank you, Kotesh. I think that that's uh, the end of our session for this week. We don't have any more queries right now. We look forward for your next session and uh, some concluding remarks from you, Kotesh. Thank, thank you very much. Thank, uh, thank you for uh, patiently uh, hearing me out. Uh, I would, uh, in uh, summary, I would like to just go back and uh, remind uh, everyone to focus on uh, building those, uh, building the culture, building those uh, management uh, uh, frameworks uh, to leverage customers, leverage data, uh, create a, a complete solution, Re rethink the value chain, rethink what is the value that you're delivering. It's not about a book that you're delivering or a, a, a journal that you're publishing. It's, it's much more than that. And a, as you start looking at it, uh, uh, th there, there are great opportunities. I, I, I strongly believe that uh, publishing community uh, has the best time uh, ahead of them, uh, especially uh, the more and more I look at it. And uh, I mean, I, all of you would have experienced this, right? So uh, as you started looking at COVID and as it started getting close, close to home or somewhere around, there was so much of uh, uh, things all over the place. There were research papers that were published. People claimed it to be research papers, which turned out to be fake uh, within no time. Uh, this wouldn't have happened if that had come through a, 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 a serious, uh, 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 you know, a, a publisher with a serious uh, 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 editorial discipline if they had, right? So there is a great opportunity uh, however uh, uh, people need to change uh, because there's, there's a new world out there there's new normal out there and all of us need to change thank you thanks Scottish. hello thank you uh, Thank you, Kotesh. Thank you to all our participants. And we look forward for having many more Go Digital series uh, in the coming weeks, in the coming months. That's the end of this session. Soon we'll be able to put this recording of the webinar on our website and on our social media posts. Thank you very much. Have a nice day.